All right, let's get started. Quick introduction. Uh, my name's Alex Benet. Uh, I'm a senior virtualization engineer at Lenaro. You can find me on the Quemu IRC channel as ST Squad. I'm interested in a wide area of uh, things, including improving the testing, the core TCG code, plugins, GDB stub, and as well as anything that's ARM related. Um, I've been working on Quemu now for nine years, so to put that in context, I'm in the sort of second uh, group of, of people that have been working for five to ten years. Obviously, next year I graduate to being a, a fully wizened engineer. Um, about a third of our developers have over ten years' experience working on the code base, so we're a fairly mature set of developers. Uh, but at least we've got about 20% that have been working on it for uh, less, th less than uh, two years. I asked this question last year just to gauge the impact of the pandemic. Uh, before the pandemic, quite a lot of people were working in offices. Sorry, that's the next slide. <laughs> Why people are developers? Uh, the uh, people who are paid to work on Quemu still dominate. Uh, we have about a third of, uh, a quarter of the people working on Quemu do it in their spare time. Everyone else is sort of paid for one degree or another. Now the working habits. Uh, <laughs> It seems that the, the impact of the pandemic is uh, still holding on. Most of us are still working at home, uh, and those that aren't are mostly working in a hybrid environment. Anyway, enough about the HR things. Let's look at the last year of code. So in total, we've had around about 7,500 commits that have been processed over around 500 pull requests and uh, nearly 450 developers working on it. If we look on the... Uh, rate of code change, it seems pretty stable. I mean, you can see a small bump over the last two years, but otherwise it seems contributions to Quemu continue at a, a nice steady pace. I wanted to have a look at the subsystems that were being worked on. So to do this, I split up the top level directories and looked at the sort of commit rate in each of those directories. So anything in the top of the directory wasn't counted. Unsurprisingly, um, Target-related code and hardware emulation make up the bulk of the code changes in Quemu. Uh, but you can see other major uh, subsystems. The block subsystem has always been um, pretty active, as have the various user uh, mode developments. And we can also see you know, documentation. And pleasingly for me, testing is also quite high activity. I also wanted to have a look at what the most active targets were. So to do this, I looked at the commit rate both in the target subdirectory and the hardware target specific subdirectories. So you can see the big um, architectures that are getting a um, lot of activity. ARM, um, RISC-V, PowerPC, x86 as well, although most of that is KVM related, and then everything else kind of falls into the noise. Um, so this year I also wanted to look at the sort of rate of code churn. So Paolo pointed me at a uh, tool called Git of Theseus. So this is a survival plot of the code going into Quemu and shows how long the code stays in Quemu before it gets replaced with, with something better. So we're roughly saying around 50% of the code that goes into the code base can survive up to about five years. This is a sort of alternative plot which shows you more of an archaeological view of the code. So you can see the very early code added to the code base at the bottom slowly being squeezed out and then we're progressively adding more and more hopefully better code into the code base. So let's have a quick look at features, uh, new features and developments. So a couple of years ago, we moved our build system to Meson. Um, and now pretty much all of the makefile activity is restricted to the, the test TCG directory. So it's, we're, we're almost uh, completely removing our reliance on our, our crafty makefile system. There was about 600, change, uh, 600 lines of uh, change to the make files and around about 2,000 lines were changed to Meson. So Meson is definitely the way to do things now. We've moved our cross-compiler detection from the uh, test TCG up into the main configure. And the main driver for doing that is so we can reuse our cross-compilers for building firmware. We're continuing our migration to using LCI tool to build our Docker files for building all our various um, targets. And the main driver for that is to uh, make flatter doc, uh, Docker files that are better cached, so hopefully most developers don't have to keep rebuilding the Docker files over and over again. They can just rely on caching it from the cloud. 
We've also been removing um, some of our sub-projects. Sub so this year we dropped Capstone because all the distributions finally caught up with a version of Capstone we could use. I think libslurp is going to go the same way fairly soon. So before we get on to the emulation features, I'll just mention hypervisors. Um, so hypervisors support in the last year, HVF for ARCH64 on, on these fancy new Mac M1s. This was actually merged just in KVM Forum last year, but it's within a year, so I thought I'd count it. Uh, Paolo's already mentioned uh, RISC-V gained support for KVM. There have been some changes for SGX, for X86, which is the uh, software guard extensions, and even Hyper-V gained support for synthetic debug. In the block subsystem, um, the block layer in Quemu has always seen a lot of active development. You can do a lot of fancy things with it. Uh, and this year, um, the Quemu storage daemon, which exposes a bunch of those features, got support for VDUs. So you can now export block devices both to hosts and guests. A number of new devices, this isn't all of them, but a couple of the sort of more relevant ones. Um, Compute Express Link, which is like a, a very fancy version of uh, PCI, uh, that got merged. It's interesting to note this was something that was done because it's still relatively new hardware, and it's quite hard for people to play with systems that have real CXL, uh, and this, was, this work was instrumental in helping support for CXL be up upstreamed into the Linux kernel. Another system to note, VFI user support. So this allows for out-of-tree emulation of PCI devices. And then uh, another one, PMBus, which is an extension of SMBus, which is an extension of I2C. That, that came in this year. Emulation. So CPU emulations, we got uh, a new architecture in the last year. This is the Lunarch uh, architecture. We have support for both user and system emulation. And there's even a TCG backend if you actually have any hardware that can run it. Um, so it's nice to see another architecture being added. But the other architectures haven't been standing still. Uh, all of the major architectures have seen development and additional instructions added. Quite a lot of uh, vector work. So RISC V, PowerPC, S390X, and Hexagon all added their vector extensions. I believe x86 will eventually count, uh, catch up soon because there's work to get the... the the slightly lagging x86 emulation uh, with uh, AVX added. I only moved ARM onto a separate slide because I was running out of space, but we've traditionally done, uh, added all our emulation to a th thing called CPU Max, which is basically the most ARM that you can get. And this is great if you want to try out new features, and although it does expose bugs from time to time when, when p uh, new features get added to the kernel. So people have been asking for more concrete models. So we added three this year. Um, Cortex A76 and Neoverse N1s. The, the N1 is like this modern server class um, processor type. And the A64 FX gives you a, an 8.2 baseline with SVE. But we have been adding more uh, features. And if you want to play with scalable matrix extensions, which is uh, basically to AI what SVE is to vector processing, uh, you still need to use the CPU max model for that. Uh, we've added a ton of uh, new machine types, an awful lot of BMCs. So BMCs are baseboard management controllers. So these are the things used to control your server farms. And we've had quite a lot of them added. Uh, one of interest is the um, FBY35, which is Facebook's BMC, I think. And this is one of our uh, uh, first board models that's got a dual SOC. Each one has its own address space, so they communicate to each other over an I2C interface. And this is hopefully one of our steps towards getting to be able to emulate fully heterogeneous systems. Uh, Open Risk, if anyone remembers that, joins the 68K um, system in having a, a virtual platform added that allows it to run slightly more modern operating systems, not rely on some of our older machine models. Uh, and then we've got things like the uh, Cano key, which is a, a, a USB security key device. I thought I'd have a quick look at the survey. So one of the things that's been a, a tension within Quemu is obviously we were originally built as an emulation platform uh, and then KVM came along and there's been a lot of interest in virtualization. So I was trying to gauge from the developers where people's interest lay, was it in virtualization or emulation? And it's actually still a fairly even split. I think there might be a, a slight uh, increase in people interested in emulation, but I think we've still got 
uh, a lot to do for both. The production development uh, question maybe wasn't properly worded. What I was trying to get to is how many people are concerned about making sure Quemu runs fine in uh, production environments, you know, in, in, uh, up in the cloud, and how many people are interested in making Quemu work more for them as development. And I suspect there's a uh, correlation between people who use it for emulation and people who use it for development. Now, finally, Quemu would be nothing without its contributors. So every year we get involved in a number of internship programs. Uh, so the two big ones are Google Summer of Code and Outreachy. Uh, and this year there was five projects. Uh, Jin Hao Fan's work on NVA, NVMe performance optimization. Uh, Rishi Liu worked on Snapshot Restore for um, fuzzing for, for Quemu. And then in order support for Vert.io by Zigao. And zone device support for Vert.io block by Sam Lee. Um, we also partnered with the Rust VMM project because they were relatively new to using GSOC, so they used our organization for their uh, extending ARC64 support for their VMM reference project. And finally, the bit I know everyone's looking for, the league tables, where we can call out all the contributions. So by change set, Richard Henderson has been knocking it out of the park this year. Uh, I think a lot of this has been driven by uh, refactoring and improvements of the TCG code that obviously touches a lot of the emulation systems. And we have Philippe, Peter, Paolo, and, and, and Mark following behind. But it's not just about adding code. We also like people that delete code, because often the code is uh, old and crafty and deserves to die. And here, Thomas is definitely ahead of everyone else in having the heaviest delete key. Obviously, Quemu wouldn't be getting far without its maintainers, and we count that by looking at sign-offs or non-author sign-offs for patches as they go through the system. And although I think Peter gets a, a slight bonus from processing the majority of the pull requests, and more about that later, we have a number of very dedicated uh, uh, maintainers making sure code gets upstream. Finally, I'd like to give a shout-out to our um, reviewers. Uh, when people ask me how they can contribute to Quemu, and they're looking for projects to get involved in, I usually suggest the first thing you can do is review some code, because we always need people to review code. You don't need any special skills to do it. You just need to be able to apply patches and say what you think. Um, and this year, Richard Henderson has been saying quite a lot of what he thinks, uh, followed by Philip, Peter, Michael, and Alistair. Uh, finally, just to call out the employees that pay our wages, um, by lines of code, we have Red Hat, followed by Lenaro, my, my, my company, IBM. None covers everyone that hasn't got a, a company affiliation that we know of, and then Qualcomm uh, at the bottom. I will call out the Eldorado guys, because if you do this by change sets, they, they, they take the fifth place for their work on PowerPC. So with that, I will say thank you and uh, hand over to the next person.